the best tips for pet owners. Sure. I really only have three things to say. When you work in emergency, there's a few things that save lives. And so this is what I think is the most important. Number one, if you have an emergency, if you're worried about your pet, especially if you have concerns like labor breathing or pale gums, do not wait too long to get help. Those are emergency concerns. You need to be seen right away. The longer you wait, the worse things can get. And a lot of times when we have patients get here, they're on death's door. Even just five minutes can mean the difference between saving them or not saving them. So if you know your pet, you'll notice that they're having a hard time breathing. You'll notice that their gums are pale. You'll notice that they're weak. Anything like that, you know your pet best if you're concerned. Don't wait too long to get help. Something happened just yesterday, actually. It was so sad. We have a YouTube channel where we put up videos and I put one up recently about labored breathing. And at first I was tempted to talk about all of the different causes of labored breathing, so I had made it a little bit longer and then I just edited everything out and I was like you know what it doesn't matter why they're having labored breathing the only thing that people need to know is go <laughs> get off the internet go to the nearest emergency clinic call them let them know that you're on the way don't wait too long and so I had edited our video down to like one minute and that's pretty much all it says and everybody's commenting well what are the causes what are the causes and um, so I was responding to one of those comments yesterday. Then another video came up after mine about labor breathing and I noticed a comment on that video where somebody said that their dog was having labored breathing and I commented, I was like, please, this is an emergency, don't wait. You have to drive to the nearest emergency hospital and get help, please don't wait too long. And then I was like, I'm sorry I didn't see this earlier. And this was on somebody else's video that I just found by accident because it played right after mine. Then the person, commented back that their pet had died. And so just to drive that point home, rule number one, if you're worried or concerned, don't wait too long. The second piece of advice I have for pet owners is prevent the preventable. So I wanna say at least half of the emergencies that we see in the emergency room are preventable. Intoxications in the home, so common. Household dangers, right? And some of these can be lethal, life-threatening. So if you are a pet owner, just remember, pets are like toddlers. They get into everything. They put everything in their mouth. If something looks like candy, they will get into it and they will eat it. And don't ever let your guard down in that respect. It seems like, knock on wood, on a weekly basis, we see dogs getting into entire bottles of ibuprofen and other medications like that. And you know that's something that can be preventable. It even says on the bottle, keep out of reach of children. Pets are children, so prevent the preventable. Go to the ASPCA animal poison control website and spend 10 minutes doing a good read of the top 10 poisons every year and make sure that you have locked all of those down in your house. I've even had cats come in for Lily intoxication. A lot of people don't even know that's toxic. And one of the more recent ones I saw, the owner literally brought the lilies into the house, was like, oh, I better check and make sure these are safe for the cat. Turned her back, started to Google, and when she turned back around, the cat had already chewed the lily, and in a matter of moments, and ended up in the ICU. So prevent the preventable, make sure that you know what the household dangers are and that you have made a safe environment for your pet. They are toddlers for 10 years at least. <laughs> Even the most well-behaved ones will climb up on a counter and get into a poison if it's there and they think it looks like candy. So prevent the preventable. And then along with that, vaccination routine wellness. Parvo is nearly 100% preventable, but we still see tons of puppies dying from it. So make sure that if you get a pet, if you're a new pet owner, that you get in touch with one of the family vets right away and you make sure that you're on the right schedule so that the little guys will receive all of their immunizations and deworming so that they don't become sick from preventable infectious diseases. Parvo, the canine parvo virus, so the one that we vaccinate all the puppies for, that was a new virus. It emerged in the late 1970s in dogs that had never been seen before. It's thought that it mutated from the feline parvo virus, which causes panleukopenia. And I guess three genetic mutations and boom, canine parvo virus. My mentors that were practicing in the 80s coming out of vet school, they said that when they first started practicing, all they just remembered 
remember it was puppies dying everywhere. It's a puppy killer virus and it killed puppies in epidemic proportions all throughout the 80s until a really good vaccine was developed. And now the vaccine is so good, it's nearly 100% preventable with proper vaccination. But that said, we still see lots of patients coming in dying from parvo. These are puppies, little puppies. It's preventable and super hard to treat, expensive. There's no cure for it. And so that's why it's so important. If you have a puppy, they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Parvo is the perfect example of that. Getting your puppy the routine vaccination starting at eight weeks on the dot. Maybe a puppy, it should be at the vet at eight weeks, not a day later, and getting their routine vaccinations every three to four weeks until they're at least 16 weeks old. And that's to protect them from diseases like parvo because if they acquire it, the cost of treating it is at least 10 times the cost of preventing it. And there's no guarantee of survival. And it's a lot of suffering to go through. And basic babysitting. So the number of pets that come in, it just, eating, swallowing things, their toys, clothing, all kinds of stuff. Cats have a tendency to really love to eat hair elastics and rubber bands and sometimes they require surgery. So just to make sure that um, you've locked everything down in that regard. And finally, be prepared. Basic first aid training. Do you know how to do CPR? Do you know where the nearest emergency clinic is? Do you have the ASPCA animal poison control phone number on speed dial? These are all precautions that you can take to make sure that if something happens that you're prepared, that you have a plan in place, that you know what to do, you know where to go, you know how to respond. We talk a lot about CPR training in the veterinary profession with our team, but Honestly, I think it's a skill that everybody should have. My old landlord, Heather, let's just give a shout out to Heather, Kiro. <laughs> she was walking her dogs one day in the woods um, in North Vancouver, and she came upon a boy that was dead. He was 17 years old, and he'd been out jogging. He was a basketball player, and he collapsed and was dead. And she was a ski patroller for a long time, so she knew how to do CPR. It was October, and she immediately called for help, called 911, started doing CPR all by herself in the freezing cold, and she saved his life. He ended up having a heart condition. He had a fatal arrhythmia, a high school aged boy. And because she knew how to respond, she had the skills, she was prepared, and she didn't wait. She saved his life. She visited him in the hospital and he fully recovered. He had a pacemaker. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. But without those skills, you know, you can't really be the hero. So take a basic CPR course, especially if you have kids, especially if you have pets. But no basic first aid and be prepared for the worst case scenario. Nobody likes to be lectured to, but we also I think it's important before you get a pet, make sure that you're truly prepared for that as well. Probably the biggest financial responsibility of pet ownership, everyone thinks it's the toys and the dog walker and the trainer. Let's just be honest, the, the biggest financial burden of being a pet owner, I know this from personal experience too, because <clears throat> when I first got my own dog, I was 22, and I didn't have any money at all. I was super broke, vet student, and I didn't have medical insurance. My puppy got hit by a car right in front of me. It wasn't on a leash, and yeah, that was a big shocker. Medical bills in a catastrophic emergency can be astronomical, and the patients that get good medical care are the ones who either have unlimited resources and can afford it, or who have good medical insurance. And for everybody else, a lot of times, you have to make really difficult decisions about what to do. That's probably the hardest part of our job. And I think it's probably one of the hardest parts about being a pet owner in an emergency. So if you're new to having a pet or if you've never had a major catastrophic medical condition and you just want a, a glimpse into what that looks like, I would strongly recommend just open up Google, go on GoFundMe and type in vet bill and you'll see the thousands of people on GoFundMe that are asking for help for their pets' medical bills. And it's everything from accidents like trauma and being attacked by larger animals to things that are totally unforeseen that nobody could have prevented or, or controlled. So be prepared. Those were our three, our three pieces of advice. Don't wait too long if you have an emergency to get help. When in doubt, check it out. Go get it checked out right away, especially labor breathing pale gums or anything that is completely out of the ordinary with your pet. Do not waste you long. Number two, prevent the preventable. So know what the dangers are in your household. Learn about ways to keep your pet safe and routine wellness vaccination goes a long way. And finally, be prepared. So financially prepared is a huge one because you don't want to ever be moose 
Okay, you guys are the best. Yeah, so we've got some really lovely people here. Their dog ended up with a really, can I tell them what happened? Yeah, and he agrees pet insurance is so important. Yeah, so Moose. Moose is the cutest dog ever. He had a chest tube for nine months or something like that. He had collapsed lungs so many times from this very unusual, oh. Um, this very unusual and rare disease. He had open chest surgery. He had to have parts of his lungs resected. He almost died how many times? <laughs> how many times did Moose almost die? I know that we saw him on emergency probably half a dozen at least times. Seven, yeah. There's just really no way around it. I mean, if you're talking about open chest surgery, CT scans, mechanical ventilation, chest tubes, all of the diagnostics, ongoing care. I mean, if you guys hadn't had medical insurance, what do you think you guys would have been looking at? Probably, I don't know, like 20 grand or something like that, I'm guessing. He had to go see an internal medicine specialist. He was in the ICU, he was in critical care, he had open chest surgery. It's not a joke. And thank God they had medical insurance and they're so dedicated. Even the medical insurance didn't cover all of it, but I think that probably saved his life. So yeah, you guys get an A plus. You guys are probably the best, most awesome, committed, wonderful pet parents. 20, yeah, so 20,000. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's a big wake up call for people who've always been lucky and who've always had healthy pets. But they don't really realize how bad it can get. And then if you end up in a situation like this, where this was not preventable, there's nothing that they could have done to prevent it. This was nobody's fault. It was just luck of the draw, really unusual situation. And um, yeah, luckily he seems to have recovered, made it through, he's managing. Um, but yeah, so it's a really good lesson for everybody. So I'm sorry you guys had to go through that, but way to be awesome. You guys are very solid individuals and it's always, don't like seeing you here in the emergency room, but it's always been a pleasure working with you. It's true. Oh, Tahoe. Okay, great example. Tahoe is an excellent example of what can happen. So you guys are like the, my top five favorite people who are commenting right now. Tahoe is a great example. Okay, let me just, is it okay if I share a little bit of Tahoe's story with you guys? Tell her I said hi. And her big brother too. So Tahoe is a little puppy. They adopted her, cutest puppy on the whole planet. Brought this brand new puppy home. Didn't have her for even 24 hours and she got very sick. And we're not talking a little bit sick. We're talking major issues, life-threatening problems, requiring expensive surgeries, intervention. They had just gotten her, so she didn't have medical insurance yet. It just goes to show you that illness can strike out of the blue. It can happen to anybody. You know, nobody is immune. In the emergency room, we always play this game called, you know, what's the worst case scenario? And it's always good to be prepared for the worst case scenario. You know, I think Tahoe was lucky enough to have dedicated owners that actually sacrificed a, a lot personally and financially to bring her through this. Most brand new pet parents probably wouldn't have done that. So we would have been put in a really hard situation of having to put a perfectly beautiful, wonderful puppy to sleep because of the financial reality of the treatment that was required to save her. But luckily, you know, you guys are amazing above and beyond. A 48 hour waiting period. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, so frustrating. Yeah. So there's all that fine print too. Do you know, may I ask what company what it was? I am just so curious. Maybe it's twice since then. Because there's so many different pet insurance companies out there. And you know, I have to say, you start to kind of know which ones are the really good ones. Um, and then I've seen some other situations where people really get their run around and it's not worth it at all at the end of the day when things get bad, you know, the insurance company doesn't have their back. Personally, I love Trupanion. I think they're amazing. In my experience, they'll just really yeah, use Trupanion now, yeah. We had another patient out of nowhere, healthy dog, mountain dog, developed meningitis. He's like months in the ICU, complications, spinal tap, MRI, multiple times. I think his, his owner said that his bills were like, I don't know, I wanna say like $40,000 over the course of one year. And literally the day that he developed problems, his mom was questioning whether or not to cancel the insurance. And we always joke that, you know, she's like, I just remember the look on your face 
when, um, cause I had asked her like, do you have medical insurance? Cause this is going to be bad. You know, he's going to need to go see a specialist. He's going to need to be in a critical care unit. And she was like, I was about to cancel it today, but I didn't. And I was just like, Oh, thank God. Like he can get the care he needs. We can send him to the, the people that can help him and he recovered. But I mean, who has $40,000 lying around? I don't. So yeah, it's life-saving. It's an expense. A huge monthly expense but at the end of the day it's that safety card knowing that if something happens you're taken care of and so that's why i think it's so important if you're getting a pet make sure you know what you're signing up for and that you're prepared and that you have thought through all of the worst case scenarios oh yeah we were talking about mahi earlier because um we were talking about the importance of having medical insurance and how and how illness can just strike out of the blue completely healthy animal young healthy fit and boom one day you just never know what you're dealing with just like mahi and and just like moose you know, these were healthy dogs and it was nobody's fault what happened to them. They just got very, 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 a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. I believe that. I do. I believe that. A thousand dollars in just medications a month. Yeah. To keep him healthy. Wow. Yeah. Mahi had Trupanion. I don't work for them, but I just have to say that they're amazing. They cover people to the moon. A hundred thousand dollars of medical expenses. That's not a joke. And you know, for people saying like, oh, that's ridiculous. A ah, hundred thousand dollars. Okay. If you spend a weekend in a human ICU, you're going to be at a hundred. Yeah. So I don't like to lecture people. Um, people hate being lectured to, but there are a few things that I think really save lives. And so those are the points I try to bring home. Don't wait too long. If you're worried, concerned, don't wait too long. Have medical insurance, be prepared. Prevent the preventable, which none of you guys' situations could have been prevented, right? Rare lung diseases, meningitis, uh, a genetically bad heart. That's not anything that these pet parents could have prevented. I mean, yeah, the genetics thing, yeah, we could all, we could all do a better job as far as genetics go with breeding and stuff like that. And, you know, there are certain breeds where, you know, like Cavalier King Charles, right? Like depending on where you live, up to 95% of those guys will have genetic problems with their heart. Yeah, so 95%, right? That's, that's irresponsible breeding and that's bad genetics. And it's not fair to the pet owners like you, right? That you adopt this lovely puppy sweetest dog and then later down the road just a few years in you find out wow we have genetic problems that you know maybe could have been prevented if more precautions had been taken many 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 steps higher down the line so it's probably not um there's no there's no fingers to point there but yeah it's i mean i think especially with certain breeds um like a cavalier i would never ever adopt a cavalier without without having good medical insurance like trupanium because you know they're an accident waiting to happen it's 95 percent boom you're gonna have heart problems like you've, you've got to cover yourself if you want to get them you are the best you are the best you guys i just want to say um just shout out some recognition you guys are all so awesome and you guys are model you, you know i wish that other pet parents could really see what you guys had to go through and how strong you were and how solid and dedicated and how you came out the other end. I just think that a lot of other people could really learn from the experiences that you had to go through. I mean, what you guys went through with Mahi, what you guys went through with Tahoe, no, no, no. You guys are awesome. What's so great about all of you guys is that you really let us do our job as veterinarians. So, you know, all of you guys that I just called out, like we went through some major catastrophic medical stuff together with your pets. And I just have to express gratitude because you didn't try to be in the driver's seat telling us what to do, telling us what tests to run, what not to run. You know, you kind of just let us do our job without fighting, without resisting. And I just want to say that that makes it so much easier for us to just, you know, do what we do best and just be able to trust and know that you guys are going to be on our team fighting with us every step of the way. And one thing that's really hard a lot of times is when you have sick and dying pets come in and you need to do a lot of diagnostics and treatments and you're, the owners are fighting you and obstructing you and blocking you, 
for all the different reasons. Sometimes it's finances, sometimes it's personal beliefs about pet ownership, like, I don't wanna spend dollars on a dog, just get a new one. And, or like, you know, they, they don't value veterinary care, they don't trust you. Um, and that just makes it so much harder. And I remember Trevor one time saying, you know, who, who's managing this case, me or you, right? And so, um, you know, it's just, it's been really nice to be able to work with all of you guys and just, you know, working as a team together, all working towards the best interest of the patient um, and not having to have, you know, somebody grabbing the steering wheel from you all the time. You know, we're all in the same car, we're all going to the same place, but really only one of us has the driver's license, right? And so you gotta let us be the one, you know, operating the vehicle. Let's so go with your gut too, yeah, 100%. So always trust your intuition, that's what it's there for. All right, well, I think that's probably gonna be it today, but you guys just let us know what you wanna see and what you're interested in, and um, we wanna know what you guys wanna hear. I hope you have a lovely day. Donate to your local animal shelter. They really need your help right now. I hope everybody stays healthy. Talk to you later. Okay, have a good day, bye. Oh no, you guys, you guys saved Tahoe. You guys saved Tahoe. You know, we couldn't have done anything if you guys hadn't given us the green light on that. So yeah, you guys are awesome. A plus, 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 all around. All right, love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.